So the uniqueness of the PIAS programs which we have for different diseases is that every program is customized for the need as per the need of the patient. In the sense if there are two diabetics, the program will not be the same even for two diabetes cases. So a thorough evaluation of the patient is done when he first comes into us, detailed including his medical reports, his past history or medications he has been taking. Right from birth till that date, we understand, try and understand his whole lifestyle, his work schedules, his personality type and everything. And then a program which suits his needs or which best helps him is customized and designed for him. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have a common program for diabetes or common program for hypertension or common program for arthritis because no two individuals are same. The requirements are different. They may be suffering from the same kind of disease, but their manifestations will be different, their requirements will be different, their capabilities will be different, that their, uh, what you say, the differences they, which they can make in themselves will be very different. So all this are take, taken into account when a program is designed for them. So that's one very unique thing about PIAS. The, though the core of PIAS is all uh, the ancient Indian wisdom practices derived from ancient Indian wisdom, which may be from yoga, which may be from nature cure, which may be from five elements, and variety of other things, food especially, all those kind of things, but with an understanding in the context of modern medical knowledge or the scientific knowledge. So that's something which we don't give up because you, a person gets convinced when he sees those numbers. Say for example, a diabetes has come to us, a diabetic case has come to us. Once he does our program in 10 days, 15 days or 20 days, he starts feeling much better. There is so much of change in him. But how does he convince himself that there is changes happening? So obviously, medicine helps there. The modern medical knowledge helps there. If you do diagnostic test, if you do a sugar test, if you do an HbA1 test, 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 if you do test for other complications for diabetes, and you demonstrate an improvement in those, it's much more convincing for the patient. And it is it becomes more evidence-based. So we also take support of these kind of things when we actually handle patients. So to that extent, the support of modern medicine is there. But with zero medications, we don't use any medicines in our center. One. Second, lot of people who come to us will be already on multiple medications by the time they come to us. So our general approach is that we don't generally take them immediately off all medications because sometimes it can be really dangerous for them. So we run through a program where gradually and very systematically with the proper follow-up and the prognostication is done and then they are slowly weaned out of medications and the, everything is in detail explained to the patient. If he is ready, then we give him a timeline. Okay, okay, if you are having a problem with thyroid and they are on thyroid medication, we tell them okay, within one month or within two months you will be totally taken off medications and we do it very gradually and scientifically with the backup of a proper investigation done. So that is another approach which we have very uniquely designed in Piazza. Yeah, that's what. See, all of us eat daily, all of us breathe daily, all of us think daily, all of us do some activity daily. It's just that if it can be done in a better way, if it can be done which accentuates your health or which helps in your condition, what's wrong? So whatever practices is learned here is a way of life. It's a part of your life. It is not something which you actually have to dedicate specific time for it. But then you have to integrate it as a part of your life. Right eating is a part of your life. So you guide, guide guidance. Okay, maybe something which is better for that condition may be incorporated into your diet. Something which is wrong for your condition may be deleted out of your diet. It's just those small corrections. So those kind of things. So basically it's a way of life. So as long as you keep doing it, you can 100% be off that disease forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Part of it, not the 100% of it, but part of it, yes, right eating, the right way of eating. It's not just the type of food you eat, how you eat, when you eat, all that is also important. So everything is, all this is also is a part of the program. See, one basic thing which all of us have to understand is that health is our inherent nature. 
actually you don't have to do anything to remain healthy in fact you have to put in a lot of effort to be sick to be diseased in fact it takes years of abuse years of misuse years of wrong doing years of wrong eating years of wrong thinking for you to develop any of those diseases maybe diabetes or hypertension or this thing years of because your body is very accommodative and with a little correction your body can really come back to health because that's your natural state you're just making people realize that health is your natural state sickness is not it is not sickness health is your natural state disease is not your natural state how to attain that yes all the things which we probably you are doing wrong or probably you are not understanding has to be now corrected and that's where we pitch in and that's where we try and put them all those things corrections together and which in totality helps them a lot yes in certain people changes in the food habits can work tremendously for certain people some kind of a practice done on a daily basis helps him a lot certain people just understanding of that particular problem okay, where it's and managing that can help him for certain people just understanding that this is the problem for my stress and doing making a correction in that can take away the disease so for different people there will be different requirements and that's why we have a program which combines all this so that when in done in combination the chances of success are so much higher yes we we do have cancer patients in vidur but as of now very not too many times we get patients cancer patients primarily were shunning away the medical treatment and adopting this as a part of their life but yes they would have undergone some surgery they would have undergone some chemo and they would have had so many side effects which has which makes a distinct uh, problem for them even their day to day living normal living so that's where these our practices help them a lot it helps them to regain back their health to the normal state it helps them to detoxify and come back to their original state much faster one second if they continue doing these practices all the good practices the chances of them recurrence can become much less or the chances of that particular disease happening again like what we say recurrence happen after few years of cancer or any kind of treatment you can dramatically reduce the chances of those kind of recurrences quality of life can dramatically increase even in spite of all this yes prevention is like we know prevention is better than cure and always all of us the kind of food we eat the kind of place we stay in kind of environment we live in every all of us are prone to different kind of things so there are we have quite Uh, programs which can help them to promote their existing health or prevent them from getting certain problems which we understand are age related or which we understand can come with as as we age we as we go on so those can be postponed or can be totally done away with yes yes absolutely Yes we do have a, a, a specialized matlab customized programs for kids yes and in fact we are now wanting to dive matlab we are trying to design a unique program which can be introduced as a part of say curriculum in the school itself as a this thing you know so that's that's our next thing which we are working on and it's progressing quite a bit so maybe by the end of this year or something we'll be able to kick in for the next academic year we'll be able to introduce those kind of thing so what we'll be doing there is that we'll be dividing those kids into two three or four age groups so based on their needs say, say for example 2 to 6 age group 6 to 9 age group 9 to 12 age group so those kind of age groups and things needed for them which can include this practices healthy eating habits and healthy relationships value based educations ecology friendly practices all those things that we are incorporating in that program which we are now planning to introduce in the schools so two ways one is directly teach the children or what we are planning to do is teach the teachers so that they can incorporate those because they are in more in touch with the children on a day to day basis so they can incorporate all those things in the child's life yeah see uh, basically i am a medical doctor when my mbbs md but i suffered from one a very rare disease so that disease 
as predicted medically i shouldn't have been surviving beyond 20 years of age 18 20 years of age so that's what my doctors most of them had predicted they like go one day he will have, have a massive splenomegaly huge really huge spleen spleen rupture i have very very low platelet counts severe thrombocytopenia my platelet counts are almost 35 40000 i have esophageal varices i have matlab portal hypertension i have too many things associated with all that so based on that a lot of things which should have happened to me but they didn't and that's what one of the reasons why he became a doctor so that i can understand things better so once i understood things then i started exploring ki okay if medicine doesn't have a solution for it then what else does so then i then then I, during my exploration i came to know about a lot of things and to a to an extent i started practicing for the last 21 22 years i haven't taken any medication for my problem and it's not that the problem has totally gone away no the problem is still there but i don't suffer from it i don't have any problems because of that problem so that's 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 a huge thing and n- very very few can believe that with this condition anybody can survive without any medication and i haven't taken any medication for the last 22 years as such Yeah, it's it's called ALS. It's called amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. That's what Stephen Hawking has. Yes, it's supposed to be. It is an autoimmune disease, which affects one some particular uh, neurons in your spinal cord, in your brain, which gets damaged. And secondly, your muscles, which are associated with that, they don't function as well. So that is one. Their brains work fine, but only thing is that physically they are not able to use these muscles, and they are not able to do that. we 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 have had one case of uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis but that came in a very very advanced stage to us he was almost bedridden almost only 100% bedridden but he is able to he had lot of breathing difficulties because his respiratory muscles were also involved so with this kind of treatments and practices he has been able to improve his breathing pattern he has been able to breathe probably if he had come early in the stage probably more help could have happened but yes autoimmune diseases many other diseases we have got tremendous results especially rheumatoid arthritis sles ankylosing spondylitis we have had some quite young people with ankylosing spondylitis and doing tremendously well the whole thing about autoimmune diseases is that the, it is a lifelong treatment with medicines the person has to be on a immunosuppressant or other corticosteroid or immunomodulators or some kind of an, a very very strong almost like chemotherapeutic drugs methotrexate and all for the life long that's the general mandate in modern medicine people have come to us with that kind of problem they were already taking immunosuppressants they were already on immunomodulators and with over a period of time in a span of 3 months 6 months they have now totally come off this medications and they are able to maintain a normal quality of life without any medications that itself is a big achievement in itself uh, yeah no Yes, of course. Of course, we have our own techniques of this, uh, doing thing. Yes, we understand their nature. These things, all those are used for the customized program for them. Yeah. No, but there are a lot of laboratory tests or diagnostic tests which are non-invasive, which may not use radiation, and you can still prognosticate. So that is possible nowadays with the newer innovations and new technologies having come up. That's perfectly possible. So you need not always resort to uh, radiations and all those kind of things. Plus, as this science is evolving, there are a lot of newer investigations which use very very minimalistic radiation. even for those like pet cities are there if you want to really scan the whole body and find out if there is any recurrence or anything like that yes given a chance if the patient is not willing it's perfectly fine with us because what ultimately matters is the quality of life what they feel and how the long they are able to live as a disease free or symptom free but yes most of the people generally are convinced when they are we are able to demonstrate in terms of some numbers or some statistics or some kind of an evidence so that's why many a times we do take help of those kind of things to prognosticate us a 
in fact if you look at it from a very very broad perspective you know this i won't say it is an cost or an expense it's an investment which they are making into their health see we make so much of investments in our lives we we spend yes yeah so so we have a trust called ss navya's trust so actually really deserving people who really need support the trust helps them out our aim is that if a person is willing and he has come voluntarily and if he needs help nobody will ever go away just because he cannot afford it or he cannot pay for it that's one thing so trust is there to support them and do that whatever needful is to be done see the two three things which you want to do one thing is that the time for this science has come already now so this is going to be the future of any kind of health management or those kind of thing we don't say ourselves as we disease management we try and manage people's health we don't manage diseases and there's a huge difference between managing a disease and managing health so we are health management people we are not disease management people that's a big shift the time has come we are probably in the right place at the right time with the right kind of people in the right team with the right backing and the right understanding of variety of aspects which go along with it now we want to take it pan world we want to take it to the maximum number of people who can utilize and benefit from this so lot of these things are new and new to us they were already existing for thousands of years in india but over a period of time either we have forgotten them or we have lost in touch with them so we are again trying to bring them into a new perspective we are trying to present to them as this generation understands so that's our contribution there so we are trying to marry the ancient wisdom with the modern knowledge and trying to give something more unique programs to the world we are expanding in terms of two three things through our this unique program called utsav where more and more people can experience at least and when they actually have a problem they can approach us we are trying to create more physical centers around we have one in uti right now we have one in bangalore eventually we'll be starting one more in chennai in other places our physical centers will be coming second thing third thing we are open to people being a part of this project if somebody is actually interested in taking this concept forward or as a, even as a business prospect or as a health prospect we are open to it to collaborate with them we tie up with them and create this more centers like that because obviously we on ourselves we may be able to create 10 centers 20 centers 30 centers 50 centers but if we have to create more awareness and reach out to more people more and more like minded people more and more such people will have to join in and we are open to those ideas okay. not really medicine for polio drops see actually you know what do you have to understand a little more base behind that see vaccine actually what does does is that it creates an environment by the way of a vaccination what you are trying to do is and you are trying to create an environment of an uh this thing where your immunity starts kicking in so for example you suffer from a disease what happens is that a virus or a bacteria you you get attacked and you we keep having these attacks from bacteria viruses very often but not always we suffer from disease why because we have our immunity to take care of it our body's immunity is able to take care of it and when whenever the bacteria or the viruses gets better of our immunity it's only when we actually suffer from a disease vaccinations are a uh, are a modality where you are exposed to those exactly those viruses or those bacteria or some antigens of those bacteria in a controlled environment and your body is challenged so that it produces antibodies to it and becomes ready with it so next time when you actually encounter the disease you are already ready with the defense so that's the whole modality of polio that matlab there is nothing wrong in it but the problem happens is for your immunity to work perfectly your nutrition has to be perfect we have seen that most of the children in rural areas all are greatly malnourished so whenever you challenge them with the polio drop or you challenge them with a the vaccine they are not able to produce the right kind of anti antibodies because they are already malnourished malnourished antibodies are all proteins so if they are protein deficient how will they produce the right proteins so in fact what happens is that they actually they give an environment where this viruses can mutate and actually they can cause more worse kind of a disease in fact so vaccination induced diseases are becoming slowly more common so that is the whole purpose of it yes 
here in naturopathy what they do because they don't use any medication whenever you are challenged with any viruses or any disease your whole science is that how can you support your body or how can you boost up your immunity to handle it better it works the same way it, you are boosting up your immunity so that you are meeting that need this time and for the future also yes there are no medicines in the program here we work on so that their immunity works the best yes their immunity works the best with the right kind of nutrition right kind of practices right kind of things so that whenever they are challenged with any of those viruses or bacteria they can handle them that much better yeah i mean we are on a mission to see uh, our indian government had done a health for all mission which was supposed we had done by 2020 we are supposed to achieve a health for all mission but it looks unlikely now but yes we are also in the same mission health for all but by way of natural means by way of means which actually is in sync or in line with the indian philosophy or the indian uh, what do you say religions or traditions we being a non violent society most of this things work perfectly fine even from that uh, from uh, from that angle so we are on a mission to take this across as to as many people as possible and normally diet and nutrition is also a very important part of uh, most of our programs as much as food is important for sustenance or life right food is important for even prevention of diseases and maintenance of right health so food is a very important component of life and more and more newer research is throwing up light on food being your medicine which about 2000 years back hippocrates had told that let food be thy medicine and thy medicine be your food which is now again proving to be true so here food is being used as a part of your as as a part of your medicines or disease management or health promotion activity so that depends on the need of the person so there are two or three things there are certain foods which are promotive so they are added to the diet there are certain foods which are destructive so they are removed from your diet as a general rule what we say the more natural the food the more you rely on god made food and not man made food the better for you okay so generally in naturopathy principles we talk about 80 20 principle okay If on a daily basis your diet 80% has to be confined of what things which god has made for you as in their natural form and 20% of your food should be what man has made for himself or man made food So if you follow this 80-20 principle, you generally can never go wrong. Mm. Plus, and one one more thing as an afterthought, I need to add is that Kiki, see, most of us actually visit centers for any such things, you know, when we suffer from a problem or we when we have a problem and we start looking for solutions. In fact, an intelligent person is one who can find a solution before the problem happens, who can preempt it. and we actually have a lot of programs or a lot of practices which can actually help them to do that so they never fall sick in their life or they can never have to go to a doctor or never rely on anything outside of them for their health promotion so many such preventive and health promotive programs are also there for us thank you